My name is Chris Stroud. I'm a DC native with a hankering for delicious dining. The DC metro area is on the forefront of the food truck phenomenon. And since we have some of the best mobile grub on the planet, some lifelong friends and I decided to start a web series dedicated to showcasing the culture, inspiration, and business behind these rolling restaurants. You'll meet the mad scientists behind these creations, hear their stories, and get an up-close look at how they've made their name. My curiosity about these traveling eateries, paired with my insatiable appetite, has left me... Trucking and Hungry! Hey everyone, I'm Chris Straub, and welcome to our first ever episode of Truck and Hungry. I'm gonna take you into some of the tastiest, most highly regarded food trucks in the DMV area. Each truck has its own unique story and personality. With the help of the owners, I plan to share these savory stories with our viewers in the DC area and across the country. First up, Rito Loco. Rito Loco was established by owners Daniel Diaz and Louis Hankins, who met one another in the mid 2000s. Sharing mutual interests in food, music, and entrepreneurship, the two hit off immediately. Both Daniel and Louie eventually decided the 9 to 5 grind was not for them, so in 2008, they left their jobs to travel the world. They discovered that it wasn't money or material possessions that made them the happiest, but rather having a true passion for their work. It was at a barbecue in 2011 that Daniel and Louie had a food epiphany and the hangover cure burrito was born. Thus began the quest of spreading these crazy good burritos across the DMV area. And what better way to spread food than starting a food truck? All right, we're meeting the owners of Rito Loco bright and early tomorrow morning. So it's time for me to sign off and call it a night. Uh, the Jerry Maguire moment came in the beginning of September. It was uh, first of the month's sales meeting, you know, classic boardroom style, vice president, president, everybody in suits, 20, 20 salespeople. And it was a real doom and gloom. Not a lot of energy in the meeting. And uh, I was at the end of the table, basically, and everybody spoke. And we were supposed to say how many sales we were going to be responsible for that month. I was like, I don't care anymore. And uh, I was like, I'm not going to sell shit. And I had a real bad attitude about it. Really? Yeah. Because you're my hero. I was like, I, I, I want that. I'm my hero, too. That's freaking awesome. Dude. I was like, I'm not going to sell anything. And uh, they were all just like, what? At the end of the meeting, they were like, come in the office, you know? They said, basically, I could move to West Virginia to this real, real crappy site where I would definitely never sell anything, yeah. or I could be fired. And I said, well, am I going to get unemployment if I, if I get fired? And they were like, yeah. And I took my name tag off and threw it across the desk and <laughs> threw my piece of hangers out and walked out the door. And uh, next day, I started on developing this. It seems like traveling had a big philosophical impact on you and also helped you realize that you guys can do something in the food truck industry and the food industry in general. It was two different experiences. I, I did my thing, he did his thing. Okay. Uh, but I think we both ultimately came to the same conclusion, which was we didn't want to be salespeople and work behind a desk for somebody else's uh, somebody else's <laughs> life. You know what I mean? Yeah. You know, took off my business suit, stopped selling million dollar homes when the market crashed. But living in Spain changed my philosophy on life and the way uh, you view success. You know, he had been to Spain and been on that trip, you know, you know went to Ibiza and fitted yeah. for the summer. I remember seeing him when he came back, you know? And he came back, and he had to get back into the suit. I remember seeing him, like, you know, at the parking lot where I worked, and he was like, ugh, I, I hate this yeah. shit. you know what I mean? Yeah. I could just see the disgust in his eyes. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I was like, I know where you're at. So you guys definitely mitigated a lot of risk by being prepared. We had to have food that came out fast, that tasted great, and was hot. You know, and that's what we did. That brand, the process you guys created kind of really went far for you because you got ranked the third best food truck in America by yeah. Forbes. That's yeah. huge. Congratulations. Thanks. I mean, that's yeah. awesome. So was that the catalyst that made you decide to do a brick and mortar or was that already in the works? How did that come around and how did you feel? I mean, when you got I, that award, it was huge. That award was amazing. I think we both woke up to it. Really? I didn't know we were actually getting it. Oh. It was kind of like a Twitter. It was a Twitter blast, and we were like, people started like re-blasting it, like, congratulations, Rito Loco, and we're like, holy <laughs> Yeah, that's awesome. Yeah. So, I'm a new customer here. What do I try? You want to give someone an impression of Rito Loco. I mean, I, for, me, it's the, for me, it's the fish taco yeah. and the fried avocado, man. I had the fried avocado. 
Yeah. And what, what kind of sauce did you have with that? When it's you a chipotle only sauce. Okay. Yeah, it's uh, it's you know, people look at the fried avocado, but yeah. you know you get the hot exterior and you know still cool on the inside. You know, we, yeah. We, it, we sell out of it every single day for sure. So that's really unique. What also is unique, I saw a fruit burrito, which I I was reading it like two nights ago, and I'd never heard of it. I would read on your website. It's I mean honestly it's. It's probably one of the best burritos that we have. It's also the most overlooked item on the menu. Um, and that's okay, we understand that because it's yeah. one of those things where you don't associate the two together, fruit and a burrito. And I grew up eating strawberries and condensed milk for dessert all the time. You know, it's fresh, it's cold, it's strawberries, blueberries, and bananas that go inside. We had a homemade sauce that's like a condensed milk, a little cinnamon and then a vanilla almond granola goes inside to add that texture balance. Uh, it's like a parfait, you know. Also. Exactly. Oh. And, uh, really makes it this nice, crisp, warm outside with this cold interior that's just like, you know, a flavor explosion. You know, I had the rib burrito last time, which was amazing. It really goes through a 60 hour process to really get these ribs dialed down. 60 hours? They do this dry rub from scratch, it sits on the ribs for two days. And then uh, we braise them in like a bed of citrus juice. It's a different type of blends of juices. And then when that's done, then the meat, the bones just kind of, they just yeah. rip right out. We take the juice, we reduce it down and make it like a glaze. So the glaze goes back on the ribs when they're cooked back on the grill later. And you know, it's just a, I pour them what we call it crack, crack sauce. Crack sauce. Crack yeah. Sauce. Nice. Just kind of just want it on everything all the time. Yeah. Right, your two signatures in our food is no cheap fillers, no rice, no beans, no bull and then the grilling of the tortilla, you know, whether it's a taco or it's a burrito. Yeah. Um, those are our two real staples. After our meeting at Rito Loco, Daniel and Louie insisted we check out their specially rigged food truck at Herndon Food Festival. Dude, this chick is good. She's really good. Festival, and we're about to check out the machine that is Rito Loco Food Truck. So you guys want to take us in real quick? Oh yeah, guys. Yeah. What's up? What's up? How's it going? Yeah, yeah. Let's do this. <laughs> Woo! <laughs> you know, we don't make burritos that are to order. We make them with cheese pico and meat. Gotcha. So. You know, it's ready. It's ready to go. Right. Like it's not like oh, you design your burrito. We we made it so simple and so good that you don't have to actually choose. All you exactly. have to do is pick the type, and it's already ready. This process allows us to move much quicker. Okay. You know, and when we're at a lunch spot or a big beer festival like this, it's all about moving pot. Yeah. Okay. But okay. like when it comes to putting on the menu, we keep the menu as simple as possible, as streamlined as move possible. Product. Yeah, we move products. Awesome. I mean, when you're a food Crack truck sauce. and you can't be open for 12 hours a day like our store, you have to maximize that window time. If you only have two hours for lunch, you have to sell as many items as you can during that two hours, and that's why we designed the truck. I love this, this uh, Rita Loco uh, food, uh, second year, this is, I, I'm back again, it's delicious, I love it. The mixtures of the seasoning, everything is just, it's just so good. It's and it's so unique because there's no beans, yes. there's no rice, exactly. it's just meat, pico, cheese. You know the sauce in that, it's called crack sauce? Really? Yeah. That's why we keep coming back in. Apparently, yeah, I don't know, I don't know what they actually know. Last year I checked this out, I'm sold. You know the owners are from Herndon, right? To find the location of their restaurant or to use their truck locator, visit RitoLoco.com. If you're in the mood for one of the tastiest and most creative burritos you will ever try, then do yourself a favor and check out Rito Loco. Until next time, I'm Chris Straubs.